miracle things. Let that amen touch the heavens. I repeat again, this month you will record more good things in your life. You will not record losses this month. You will record amazing success. Amazing progress will take place in your life. In the area where your enemy is expecting you to fail, God will give you an understanding testimony. If you are saying amen, say better amen. This month, you will enjoy marvelous help. You will enjoy marvelous help. You will enjoy marvelous help. Your enemy will be planning, God will be scattering. They will be planning, God will be putting them to shame. If you are saying amen, say better amen. They will be arranging, God will be putting them into confusion. If you are saying amen, say better amen. You will not lack bread to eat. You will not lack wine in your house. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Every door connected to your rest roundabout, I decree let angels open them for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will test the favor that is from on high. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone programmed for untimely death, let that arrow backfire. Whoever is using your picture to call your name for evil, I prophesy against them, let them answer the evil call. Let the person answer the evil call. Let the person answer the evil call. Whoever they are using to sponsor blackmail against you, let the God of Oyere go clothe them with reproach. Let the information giver be clothed with reproach. Let the information receiver be clothed with shame. I decree for you this month of August the door connected to your blessing will not be shut against you. In the name of Jesus. Whoever is that mysterious attacker that attacks you in your dream, I prophesy, let the vengeance of the blood smite them. Let the vengeance of the blood of Jesus smite them. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Today you are going home with something. In Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. In our series of teaching for the midweek, August 2018, our focus is on unveiling the fundamentals of success. Every child of God is ordained for success. God did not create you to be a failure. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So you are not a failure because you are in the image of God. Like begets like. So you don't look like God by being a failure. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. 
But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Say with me, good success. So the plan of God for me and you is to record good success. I have observed that truly in life, no one intentionally wants to fail. No one intentionally wants to fail. I've never seen anyone that is intentionally walking towards failure. But scripture says the labor of the foolish man wearieth every one of them, for he knoweth not how. In everything in life, there is a know how. He knoweth not how. For you to know the know-how, the implication is that you must locate the key. What is the key? How does it work? No matter what anyone is doing, there is a way that you must do it for it to work and work well. So locating the key must become your ultimate desire. And scripture said, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, and it is the honor of kings to search them out. The honor of kings to search them out. That is why in our subject of teaching this evening, our focus is on the folk on the force of vision. Vision. Please permit me to start it early this way. Vision is not what you see when you sleep. But vision is what takes sleep away from you. I see somebody carry cutlass. If they pursue me, if they pursue me, I just they shout Jesus. That is not vision. That is nightmare. Vision is not what you see when you sleep. Vision is what takes sleep away from you. Without vision, the frustration in life will be more. Many are frustrated in life, not because they choose to be frustrated, not because they feel like being frustrated, but because they lack vision. Proverbs 29 and verse 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. That people perish. That does not mean that you will die. To perish there means to lose what? To lose value. To lose honor. So what many are really suffering now that they are calling, I'm just tired, I'm just frustrated. Lack of vision. People that carry vision are not frustrated. People that carry vision are never frustrated. It takes vision to unfold the glorious God, destiny that God has appointed for you. To them that he did predestined, he called. To them he called, he justified. To them he justified, he also glorified. So the unlocking of your glory is the revealing of your vision. And what is this vision? Having an understanding of God's intent plan. God's intentional plan. God's intended plan for your life.
For you to discover God's vision for your life, you must ask yourself, Lord, why am I here and what have you created me to do? You are not a pa or chopper passenger. Commenter, commenter, commenter. Have you noticed that most of your passengers, they don't enter the vehicle? Lagos, 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 Lagos. Abuja, one chance. Enter the one chance. They are showing others, but they are not going. He said, before you were born, I knew thee. And before you were formed, I consecrated thee and ordained thee for this purpose. So ask yourself, why am I here? Your being born into that family is not a coincidence. It's not a mistake. You were born for the glory of that family. You are the one that will make that family start to shine. Maybe you don't know I'm revealing it to you now. You are the star that your family is hoping for. Some people just stay and begin to feel bad. Which kind of family they come bomb me inside itself? They for bomb you for to rock. <laughs> Where you were born is not your problem. Your major concern is to discover why you were born. Most great, great stars were not born in the palace. All the great stars we have heard of. Go and check it. I have one book, Profile of Success. I'll bring out, out tomorrow so that you can see it, if you can get it by. Most of all the great stars that I've heard of, no one was born in the palace. So don't stay and begin to feel bad. Oh, it doesn't embalm me for Potacot. It doesn't embalm me for worry. <laughs> Your problem is not location. Your problem is vision. If you can discover it, you will change gear. Life will take a new sequence. Where there is no vision, the people perish. To perish means to fade away. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's why I want to let you know that your present state can be contrary to your end, which is glory. But I have good news for you. God has plan for your life. I say God has good plan for your life. So stop merely existing. Discover vision so that you can start living. If you have not discovered vision, you are merely existing. And that's why when someone asks you, how is life? You say, with the manager. And that person, how is life? We are patching it. You are not here to patch life. You are here to fulfill destiny. Say, good amen. Yeah. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. I wish they can give me all the translations. The first one, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an unexpected end. Give me a, okay. For I know the plan that I have for you, say the Lord. They are plans for good and not of disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Give me amplified, please. Is that amplified? I know what I am doing. I have all, I have it all planned out. Plan to take care of you, not abandon you. Plan to give you the future you hope for. 
the future you hope for is the one you have seen. It's not shouting amen. You are just creating excitement. <laughs> Let's see the next translation now. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, said the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Hear me? You were created for a good outcome. You better say a good amen. amen. What is happening around you now is not your final outcome. It is only preparing you to reach the best outcome. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now this is another translation. I alone know the plan I have for you. I'm sure this is NIV. Plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plan to bring about the future you hope for. Go to the next one now. Is that all? <laughs> okay. For I know the plan I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and a future. I think this should be the NIV. The next one. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You don't have NIV. I mean, amplified. Give me amplified. Uh -huh. For I know the thoughts and plan I have for you, say the Lord. Thoughts and plans for your welfare, peace and not for evil, to give you a hope in your final outcome. There is a design plan. You are not a child without a plan. Every building carries a plan. You, are, you didn't arrive here without a plan. There is a master plan for your life. And the discovery of that plan is what we call vision. Say with me, vision. vision. That plan must be discovered. Vision shows you where you are supposed to be. Vision is the unveiling of God's ultimate plan for your life. Having ambition is good. But securing vision is better. Having ambition is, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be APC chairman. <laughs> yes, now because the moment you are APC chairman, you can become acting president. <laughs> Am I not correct? So that when President travel, you will not be the one telling DSS how to operate. <laughs> That's ambition. But I want to let you know, vision is superior to ambition. Ambition will make you a local champion. But vision will make you a global figure. I want to say again, there is no joint vision in this life. There is only one personal vision. That's why you cannot use another man's plan to run your life. If you have been using another man's plan to run your life, your lane is empty. You are using another man's plan to run your life. Your lane is empty. When will you be on your own lane? 
In Joel chapter 2, he said, And none shall break their rank. And none shall break. When will you be on your own lane? Busy body. You are a champion in other people's matter. Where your own matter? Drinking Panadol on another man's headache. You go soon get a problem. Oh, that scripture is it in first somewhere. He said, <laughs> I was busy here and there. And the goat they asked me to keep it and run away. I was busy here and there. I was busy here and there. The sheep that they asked you to keep um, has run away from your hand. I was busy run here and there. Hear me? Your only chance to stand out in life, vision. What makes you unique? Vision. It gives you relevance for living. Nobody can describe you better than what you are created to live after. I want you to know this also. Men can describe you wrongly, but God has created you rightly. A discovery of vision today will turn you from a person to a personality. A discovery of vision today turns you from a person to a personality. Discovering your vision brings you to the point of knowing your purpose for living. Knowing your purpose for living. No wonder they say life begins with a discovery of purpose. I want you to hear this. Make no mistake about it. There is something you are created for. It is vision that brings you to the sweatless realm of living. Not so far ahead. You were not created in so far ahead. It is vision that brings you to the sweatless realm of living. There are people that are not sweating, but they are making visible progress. Touchable progress. Feelable progress. Handleable success. As a child of God... You are ordained for a colorful lifestyle. But it is your choice. It's not by force. It is your choice to discover vision. But I want to say at this point, seeking to discover vision, you must do it early. Because if you don't do it early, you will waste a greater part of your life Chasing shadows. Working with wrong people. By the time he knocked down on you that this is what you are created for, you will now be wondering which energy will I use in pursuing it? No one that scripture says it is good for a man to be at his yoke while he is a youth. A greater percentage of our youth are visionless. Do you know why they are visionless? Every time they gather, the only thing they want to hear is talk show. Talk show. If it is not talk show, they are not interested. Dating. 
how to toast a woman how to know whether she like me visionless youths when will you grow up time is not on your side playing boyo -yo is for a season very soon you will be faced with reality I was telling you the other day, it gives me concern. I'm not interested in talk show. I'm looking for people that are heading for destiny. Every day, talk show, talk show. When will you get and say, Lord, show me what you have created me for? Show me what you make me shine in life. Talk show. Raise your standard. You know, get one. I need you to hear this. 20 children don't play for 20 years. If you like, have one of the best phones and be doing WhatsApp and Facebook in church, you will soon be faced out. I'm telling you. You will get to a point, even watching the Facebook, you will be tired. You think vision is only for men? Sisters, to you to catch vision. Not go and dream about a prayer. The Lord showed me that he's a chair. A <laughs> chair will see your own. The Lord showed me, he said, no be you. Now let you the dream. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just follow me. We are going. We are going somewhere. Do you know it is the discovery of vision that brings about your usefulness for living? Until you discover vision, you will be dissipating energy. You will be wasting time, wasting energy, wasting money, going the wrong direction, company with wrong people. Oh, no wonder they say birds of the same feather. They flock together. Are you a chicken or you an eagle? You better answer me. Oh. For mouth. <laughs> chicken, they always stay crowded. Eagles, they find their way at the top. If you don't secure a vision, you don't have a place at the top. If you don't have a vision, you don't have a place at the top. But there is a place at the top for every one of us. It takes vision to separate yourself. How do I discover vision? How do I discover vision? We are going to look at it in three different folds very quickly. Number one, go directly to your father. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. You shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you great, say with me, great, and mighty things which thou knowest not. You shall call upon me. You shall call upon me and I will answer you. And hear me, this kind of calling is a passionate call. Lord, show me. Show me. I won't forget one of my friends served together in NCCF. He was going for preaching engagement. You go to Baptist Church, Rema Chapel, Agape Love, plenty places. 
So every time I was seeing him fasting, man, the guy was fasting more than me. So I know, I said, Why are you, what are you really fasting for? He said, I want God to call me. You know, if God doesn't call you, call yourself. You are either hearing the call or you are hearing miss call. He fasted. Now, a month to our passing out, Wale was crying physically. He said, Tony, God no one call me. I want you now, Brother Ogechi, uh, Emmanuel Adegoke, our president, our NCC president, I want you people to join me in this fast. God must speak to me, must call me. So, jokingly, and I said, not by force. He said, but you can't you see my zeal? But I won't lie to you. He has been getting preaching engagement. So finally, the last week before passing out a rehearsal parade, I said, Wale Alpha, God don't call you. He said, no great call me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, our Bible study secretary, Brother Larry Akinyo, very vibrant and God. They were already telling him, you be a pastor. He said, God has not told me anything. When he tells me, I will know. He was preaching everywhere. He was already working in a bank. Just, it was just last year. I just called him and said, how far? He remember those days that uh, Wale was fasting and prayed that God should call him and he didn't call him. <laughs> he said, my brother, this thing, you don't force it. It just comes. Now, let me tell you, the cheapest way to assess the call is to be faithful. What did I say? God sees the way you are doing whatever you are doing now to determine what he calls you for. It, to determine what he shows. Hear me? Not everybody is called to be a pastor. So that you won't go and begin to think now that the, the vision that I'm talking about is a call to ministry. It's not true. It's not everybody that is called to be a pastor. You can call, be called to be a mini, music minister. It's not that everybody in choir now has been called to be a music minister. Some are just there making melody to the Lord. We appreciate you for making melody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be angry with me. Oh. Am I? Uh -uh. These people have I formed for my glory that they will show forth my praise. <laughs> praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But there is something you are created with that will distinguish you in life. That will cause you to stand out. There are no two persons like you that can do it like you. No two persons. We may have mercy, but we don't have two Cristiano Ronaldo. Am I saying the truth? Baba, this one they score go, this one they score go. But the uniqueness of this one does not cancel the other one. So you are created with a definite vision. An authentic purpose. So discovering it now becomes your concern. And that is why one of the platforms that will guarantee the unveiling of gospel and purpose for your life is prayer. You shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you. Habakkuk chapter 2. Let's look at that, chap that um, scripture now. Habakkuk chapter 2. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and watch and will watch to see what he shall say unto me and what I will answer when I am reproved. 
the next verse and the lord answered me and said write the vision watch to see write the vision make it plain upon the table upon tables that he may run that read it i will watch to see if you are not a watcher you will struggle no wonder satan is attacking your prayer life because you may be thinking you are praying for the church you may not know that that is one of the channels that God will use to unlock his plan and purpose for your life. So the altar of prayer is the bad place of vision. God is a shower. He's a shower. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man what God has planned for them, that prepared for them that love him. So you must keep drawing closer. Who knows the secret is who you draw closer to? Am I saying something? Who knows the secret? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. You keep abiding. <laughs> you keep abiding. Because the more you abide, the more he will be showing you. He will be showing you. He will be showing you. I tell you the truth. I never began to be a pastor. I'm not lying on this altar. My, my target was to be one of the best Exploration geophysist in this country. And I was already walking towards it. I was already walking towards it. In my third year, our dean, Professor Peter, has told me, you are not going for your service. The moment you finish, continue. I said, why, sir? He said, so that you can continue this project. And as I stopped, now there the thing stop. I don't know if they have gotten any person. Because I remember I met one of the MSC students that came from Cameroon the other time that followed me to the field. She said, that is still like that too. You know, God's going to try to do him. Is there any problem? You've been a pastor and doing masters. I said, I'm doing a senior masters here. <laughs> that was my target. But when the call landed, bang, bang. <laughs> I just knew that, hey, man, <laughs> these two roads cannot go together. Oh. These two roads cannot go together. Inside me, I was feeling bad. Lord, why, why are you calling me now? I was feeling bad. I was feeling bad. I was feeling bad. I didn't know that my ultimate destiny was here. I was just feeling bad. So I tried, I tried everything possible to... Let me not go there. I was trying to see how I can be doing the work. My spirit was telling me, you cannot. The way this thing is, you cannot go that side and go this side. I remember I traveled one day to the village. I brought out all my fires, man. My mind travel. My mind travel. I said, what? At the end, I was grateful. I said, Lord, I thank you. I obeyed the call. I thank you. I obeyed the call. Do you know what? One day I met our geophysicist lecturer, Professor Kereke. He saw me. He paused. He said, Tony, you disappointed us. I said, I didn't disappoint you. I only made God happy. He said, no, you disappointed us. You disappointed us. But I said, sir, my life is better than what you think now. 
I know where your mind is going. Money. I said, forget that side. We don't arrive. I'm not that kind of pastor you are thinking about. I told him, oh, you know, those days, the moment you hear that somebody has received a call, everybody, oh, take out here. Yeah? Oh, sorry, yeah? oh, you shall be where? <laughs> Am I saying the truth? They will now begin to feel pity for you. Oh, oh, it shall be where? I said, I'm not that kind of pastor you think about. I said, my head is correct. Everything is working well. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, pray. pray. If you are not a lover of prayer, you may not assess God's plan and purpose for your life. Permit me to say at this point, God's vision for your life is elastic. The closer you get, the more he reveals. The closer you get, the more he shows. He, keeps, he can't show you everything immediately. He will only be showing you in parts to know whether you are still interested. As you are drawing closer, he's still revealing. As you are drawing closer, he's still showing. So as you are killing your prayer life, you are burying your destiny or vision. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Number two, how do you discover vision? You discover vision by your divine endowment. There is a divine deposit in inside each and every one of you that is seated here now. In the parable of talent Jesus talked about in Matthew 25, he said he gave some talents. He gave one, he gave two, he gave how many? Five. The one that he gave five produced five more. The one he gave two produced two extra. And the one he gave one said, I know you are a wicked and shrewd master that like reaping where you didn't sow. So that is why when you went out, I just dig ground and bury it so that when you come back, I will give it to you back the way you gave it to me. Everybody here has an endowment. You know what? Some don't like their own. They like other people's own. Even in ministry. Some don't like their own. Some are called to be pastor. They don't want to be pastor. They want to be seeing vision. Hey! That woman living at your backyard wants to kill you. <laughs> That's what, you know, people like to hear those kind of things. So they now go try to train how to be cajoling them. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And none shall break their ranks. There is what you are created. There is nothing to envy anybody for in this life. If you can believe what you have, Trade what you have, you will excel. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Is that they a shouting preacher? How many of you have watched Joel Austin? He is never a shouting preacher. You can't hear him be cast out today in the name of Jesus. He's just talking. He's just talking as if he's playing with you. And yet he's gathering almost twenty eight to thirty thousand crowd. His father stopped at five thousand plus. You are unique. Be excited about your uniqueness. Vision does not make you inferior. It brings out the best that is in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I remember reading the book of um, uh, David Yonggi Cho. Holy Spirit, my senior partner. He said at a point in time in his life, he was praying to be like Benny Hinn. He was praying, oh Lord, give me anointing like Benny. So I'll be praying for people for them to be, give me anointing. And the Holy Ghost dazed him one day, he said, 
if you desire to be like Benihi, you will end up as a photocopy. You will lose your originality. Do you want to be like Benihin? Or you want to be like Paul David Yongicho? He said, I want to be like David Yongicho, but I still want to have the... Shut up! I only have one Benihin. The moment you desire to become Benihin, you are a photocopy. After that day, the prayer topic changed. Now, is he not recording healings? Is he not recording signs and wonders? Does Papa need to call telephone number like Apostle Suleiman? He doesn't need it. That is Apostle Suleiman's unique grace. Nobody can contest it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? God gave him that one. But Papa can say, Somebody here, whatever is tormenting you is giving up on you now. And it is confirmed. I say it is confirmed. Will Papa now be praying to be like Apostle Suleiman? Never. He's unique in his own. He's standing out. He's doing the work of the Lord perfectly. Meet. Celebrated. I celebrate him. Very well. So, there is an endowment on you that will cause you to stand out. Kill jealousy. Kill envy. So that your own can emerge. Another reason why some people's gift may never come out. Bad mouth. Say with me, bad mouth. Let me describe the bad mouth that I'm talking about. When you stay and you begin to speak against other people's grace, your own may never come out. Any grace you speak against frustrates your own from manifesting. And that is what Satan has given many in the church as an assignment. They begin to speak against. Keep speaking, no. The people you are speaking against, they are not going down. Now you they suffer the going down. Now you they suffer them. Five different geo general overseers. We are ganging up and plotting to see how Canaan land we close. I'm not sure many of any of you, many of you have heard that story. As they were planning, God made sure that all their churches closed. As I'm talking with you now, all of them, their churches have closed. All their churches have closed. Do you know why God closed it? <laughs> they used their hand to buy their market. When you are speaking against another man's grace, another called servant, another person's vision, you are quenching your star. You may call it any name you like. Ride on. Fire on. Your vision may end up in your village. But may God have mercy on you. You better say a good amen. Yeah. That's why severally they have tried to trick Papa in speaking against other anointed vessels. He said, God didn't call me to judge another man's assignment. There was a time they wanted Papa to endorse and stop TB Joshua from appearing on TBN. He said, will you get out of my office? He said, I did sign. Adegbo Esan, does it mean that I should sign? Will you get out of my office? I didn't call him. I don't have any right to judge him. Get out now! That was the end of that paper. That paper did not see any daylight. He said, let the one that called him be the one that will stop him. Many anointed people 
many anointed faces they take delight in speaking against other people's grace i'm waiting for when you will rise the world is waiting for you the world is waiting for you keep speaking no wonder wise men when they see this trap they do jump and pass but you when you see it you jump and enter Let's chairman this matter. Let's chairman this matter. That was how some celebrated pastors in Auchi were holding fasting and meeting, fasting and prayer meeting to see how Omega Fire will close. Do you know what angels did? Why they were doing the prayer? Angels were driving their members away from their church. All their members have gone to Omega Fire. You don't know the trap the devil has set for you. No wonder Jesus said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Value your gifts. Value your endowments. There is, you have enough work. Tell your neighbor, I have enough work. Do, do you know what makes you get interested in doing too many things that are not bringing money to your pocket or adding glory to your life is because you have not discovered your own. If you have discovered your own, you will be bothered and you will tax yourself to make sure that your own work. Number three, as we round up, make a choice. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 15. Make a choice. You must make a choice. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. Go now. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes. And his judgment that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess. Choose. Tell your neighbor, choose. Have a choice of a particular career. And I want to let you know that nobody will ever choose for you. Before you make this choice, what do you like doing? What interests you? What is it that you do with ease, without stress? The moment you make a choice, you know what I mean? it is in the process of doing what you are doing that God begins to open other chapters for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Every one of us will carry hidden potentials that are yet to be uncovered. But in the process of doing what you are doing now, the Holy Ghost begins to reveal other things that you never knew existed and it is locked up inside of you. So stop struggling. By all means, there is a place to start. There is something you can be doing now that will open your... Do you know that from your ambition, God can show you your vision? From your ambition, God can show you your vision. From your ambition, God can show you your vision. Stop struggling. It's time to seek for the discovery of purpose. Make a decision to seek it. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the honor of kings to search them out. I think that should be in Proverbs 25. So you must search them out. So if you don't discover, you will end up living in regret. Hear me? If you like, agree. If you like, don't agree. You either discover your vision now or you are a laborer in another man's vision. If you don't discover your own now, you will be a laborer. You will be an apprentice. You will be a paid worker in another man's vision. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So discovering vision after you have discovered what next do I do? Catch a dream. Tell your neighbor, catch a dream. A wise man said, aim nothing, hit nothing. If you aim at nothing, you will hit at nothing. 
In every football field, the goal post decides where you hit your target. That is why to be dreamless is to be doomed. You are doomed for life. You are doomed for life. Catch a mental picture. Because the vision has been given, you catch a mental picture of where your future is taking you to. Many are not making it because Nigeria is hard. It's not true. Do you know why they are not making it? They are dreamless. They are dreamless. Genesis 11 and verse 6. God himself said, this they have begun to imagine. And nothing shall be restrained from them. Which they have begun to imagine to do. And nothing shall be restrained from them. Genesis 13 verse 14. Genesis 13 verse 14. Studio very fast. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. The next verse now. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. The rule of dream is as far as your eyes can see. The farther you see, the farther you go. Dreams are very powerful. You can see what you want to become. What you don't dream, you can never see. So what you dream now is what you become. Now, if you say that uh, I dreamt that somebody was carrying cutlass and pursuing me. Is that your dream now? So your dream is that someone is, you are dreaming that someone will always be carrying cutlass and be pursuing you. Or oh, cow was pursuing you in your dream. That's ancestral spirit attack. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Vision tells you where you belong. Why dreams determines its existence. Vision tells you where you belong. But dreams tells you your existence. This is your place. It takes dream to arrive at your place of fulfillment in life. Do you know the problem of many believers? It's not that they don't pray, they pray. Do you know why they can't make it? They pray, but they don't dream. As God showed you, he never showed me anything. No, he has not shown me. Anything you want to see, you go see. God has not shown me anything. But David said something. Open thou my eyes, O Lord, that I will behold wondrous things. What do you want to behold? God will never take anyone beyond what he has seen. <laughs> what you see determines where you reach. So you must desperately, Lord, show me something. Lord, show me something. One, you have seen the vision, God's plan. The next thing, show me where we future. It's just like now, let me, let me put it this way. Many are called to preach. But what shall I cry? Mike Mudok is echoing wisdom. True of us. True of us. Benihin, Holy Spirit. True of us. Papa. Prosperity, faith, signs and wonders. Am I correct? What shall I cry? Where is my place? You must know your place. Some are me, success. You can't talk success, rich that man. No? The way he tears success. It be on me, <laughs> it demystifies success in another dimension. Excellence. 
what shall I cry? Now he has seen the vision. Now this is the dream. You must see your own. I say you must see your own. I say you must see your own. God will never take anyone beyond his dream. God will never take anyone beyond his dream. If you lack a dream, you will die quick. It takes dream to live longer. As long as the dream is in place, you can't die. Die go where? You must fulfill your mission. The moment dream has been revealed to you, the next thing is pursuit. Remember we read in Habakkuk chapter 2, he said that he may run. You now begin to pursue. That he may run that read it. That run there now means to pursue the reality. To pursue the actualization. So you must be prepared to make that dream a reality. In the, in the course of pursuit, they will call you names. See in head. See as in B. See as in the dwarf. It's only you that I see, you know. You know, let me say this now before we rise up to pray. You have one assignment to talk. I have one assignment to do. Be doing the talking, let me be doing the doing. While you are talking, I am doing. God told Papa, backbiters and talkers will always be at your back. If you don't want to be in front, go to the back. That's why, in every assignment, even as I'm here now, there are people that can do this job, but I don't understand what this pastor is doing. He's taking too much of himself. He will have done it like this, done it like this. You know what? It's just like playing football. Spectators can play more than the players. See goalkeeper, see post. If I don't do it like this, <laughs> I might say something to somebody. <laughs> what did they do now? Which do you see? You see goalkeeper, empty post, you know if he score. <laughs> That's why there are many people that can. Are you sure this pastor said is correct? If I were to be him, thank God you are not me. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? Thank God you are not me. The day you get to this level, you go hear your own story. Am I saying the truth? That's why when God has given you your own vision, and you are pursuing your dream, mind your assignments. There are always commentators. And their job is to see how you will lose your focus. And I won't forget one statement by my mentors. If you refuse to be distracted, very soon your detractors will soon be attracted. Rise up to your feet. Scripture says, when he gave them the communion, their eyes were open. You are going to pray. Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to behold what you have created me for. Are you ready to pray? Lift up your voice right now and talk to God. Open my eyes to see. You better pray. Oh, this is a serious prayer. Lord, show me what you have created me for. Show me what you have designed me for. Show me my purpose for living. Show me my purpose for living. Open my eyes to behold the great things you have created me for. You see now, the tempo of the prayer is very low. If we were to be praying for money now, the tempo would have been very high. Show me what you have created me for. Every veil blocking my eyes, my spiritual eyes, 
from seeing what you have created me for lord open my eyes to see 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 in the name of jesus christ open my eyes to see open my eyes to see open my eyes to see in jesus name we pray let me say this before we partake of the communion the moment you discover vision the moment purpose is revealed to you you cannot just marry anybody that is why you see this sister he fine you see this one oh he got figure eight he got figure 12 if i oh this one he got open teeth you are real there you have not, the moment you discover vision you must choose someone that will suit the vision you know you not everybody you see oh this one hey he tore where where chop and a tree when you discover vision you will be choosy on who will suit the vision not who will kill the vision we have dream makers and dream quenchers may you not marry a dream quencher yeah. any manipulation going on in anyone's life i decree by this communion let the manipulation scatter if you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whatever is blocking your eyes from seeing where today, by the blood of Jesus, let your eyes be opened. As you partake of this communion, you will not fall into the trap of the wicked. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. Any marine manipulation going on in your life now, by this communion, let it scatter. That amen is not touching heaven. I pray for you. By this communion, whatever God has destined you for, let inspiration begin to come to your mind. Let revelation begin to flood your spirits. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done.